I want to talk about several important pharmacological uh, drugs that is very important to know for the NCLEX exam, but I want to make sure to give you an overview first so, so that you really understand deeply exactly why and how those drugs work. So let's talk about the ANS or the autonomic nervous system and it also has other names. It's also been called the visceral nervous system and also the involuntary nervous system, right? Now that is very important since it implicitly describes the autonomic nervous system or ANS since it's involuntary or non-voluntary, right? Now let's take a step back and and look at a bigger picture. Now this might sound very boring to a lot of you but I wanna go back to our anatomy and physiology days. Okay now the autonomic nervous system or the ANS as we all know is a part of the the peripheral nervous system or the PNS which is basically just nerves or what we call ganglia right which are basically nerve cells that surrounds the brain and the spinal cord okay now the main job of the peripheral nervous system or the PNS and if you look at the word peripheral right it's similar to uh, to periphery which correlates to location um, outside periphery right or a boundary okay now the job of the PNS is it basically carries motor and sensory information that's it that's all you need to know and it sends that to the central nervous system or the CNS through the the sensory and the motor cells okay now remember when I mentioned that the PNS carries motor and sensory information to the CNS the way our body sends those motor information it is done in two ways it is done voluntarily as well as involuntarily when we say voluntarily it means we have a conscious choice right and that voluntary nervous system is what we call the somatic nervous system and it controls mainly our skeletal muscles now you and I can consciously contract or flex our muscles right it's within our voluntary choice on the opposite side to that is the involuntary system or what we call the autonomic nervous system ANS or the automatic system as others might call it since it functions below our level of consciousness it does things without uh, without us knowing or being conscious about it right and this includes our heart digestion our breathing or respiration salivation um our pupillary dilation right and uh urination okay and it's pretty much self-explanatory now we can further divide the ANS into two subcategories and those are the sympathetic and the parasympathetic nervous system and these two are these two are the the ones that we're gonna be focusing on later on now the sympathetic nervous system is our fight-or-flight system it is it is how our body reacts to stress and danger right during this reaction the hormone adrenaline is secreted and causes increase in the heart rate and lung functions right it dilates blood vessels in the muscles and, and pupils while at the same time constricts blood vessels in other areas of the body such as the digestive system which would result in a decrease in digestion and all of this is done to compensate for the blood flow okay now the parasympathetic nervous system is responsible for the stimulation of the body in rest quote unquote or the activities when our body is at rest right such as after eating and that includes digestion defecation and urination now we can finally talk about pharmacology and the drugs that affects the ANS or quote unquote the sympathetic and the parasympathetic drugs and I want to simplify this pharmacology as simple in a minimalist way as I can so it can be easier and simple uh, for you to understand 
and I believe strongly in, in understanding concepts behind terms and drugs so that there's less to memorize and it can be easier for you to pass your NCLEX. Now let's go focus and go over the sympathetic nervous system. Now there's three main categories of drugs that you need to know and that would include the sympathomimetics which as its name implies mimics the sympathetic nervous system. Second is you have the adrenergics which basically stimulates adrenaline right and lastly you have the beta agonist which turns on the beta receptors which are basically sub receptors of the sympathetic nervous system. Let's proceed and go over the parasympathetic nervous system which has two important categories of drugs that you need to know for the NCLEX exam and it includes the cholinergic drugs and the muscarinic drugs. Now let's go over and focus on cholinergic drugs which basically stimulates the cholinergic receptors and it mimics acetylcholine and one of the most common cholinergic drug that you might encounter in your NCLEX exam is pilocarpine or pilocar which is used for glaucoma and how this drug works is that it acts in the muscarinic receptor within the eye causing the muscle to contract which uh, eventually causes meiosis which is basically constriction of the pupil and the side effect of this cholinergic drug which basically mimics acetylcholine would include headaches, hypotension, increased salivation and nausea and vomiting. It is also very important to take note that pilocarpine or pilocar can also cause some blurred vision on the patient. So if you have a question in the NCLEX in which it would state that after a nurse administered a pilocarpine to a client and the patient start reporting having blurred vision after the eye drops have been instilled then we at least know that it's normal since we expect that as an adverse reaction to this particular medication. If you want more important notes in regards to this specific topic, uh, please visit allnursingnotes.com. That's A-L-L, nursingnotes.com. And I wish you the best on your NCLEX. Study hard and God bless and good luck.